Hi, welcome back to Guru Grit. If you've been here before and if you haven't, my name is Monica and this is just my little place on the internet where I talk about manifestation and spiritual things that I enjoy, etc, etc, etc. So without further ado, let's just get into today's topic. I wanted to make a quick video about just getting it done. Just do it. Just pick something that works for you. Pick something that you want. Pick one thing. Be really clear. Intend to allow it into experience and then just apply yourself. So this is the thing I find so fascinating about the um, sort of manifestation community or the spiritual community or just this sort of, um, I don't know if this work brings it out in people or what, but it seems maybe it's influenced by our culture, which is, you know, where I live in the West has a lot to do with like consumption. Now, unless you're curious and like, for me, this is my life. So it's always been my life. So I'm always going to want to read something and watch something, go to another seminar, meet more people, whatever. But in terms of actually manifesting, you don't need that much. You just need one thing that works for you one time and to put it into work. So figure out what that is for you. So I've just wanted to make this video to just make like a maybe, I don't know, like a wake-up call that you don't need another method. You don't need a 444, 369, whatever. You just need one thing that works. So for you, if that's visualizing, if that's affirming, if that's, you know, not even thinking about it, if that's feeling, whatever that might be, just do that. Just pedal to the metal and go for it. And this is the interesting thing too. Neville Goddard even said, man was meant to be doers of the word, not hearers of it. So the more that you fall down this rabbit hole of finding out, okay, I'm going to try this method. I'm going to write this, put it under my pillow. I'm going to get this crystal, then this crystal, then this like mega crystal, the size of a castle. It's like, you're not any closer to your goal because you're simply affirming with your external experience and your actual actions, which are far more powerful, you know, than thought that it's never enough and you get stuck in the state of wanting. So you stay in the state of wanting and, and signaling to the universe that you're needing something that you don't currently have. So just pick one thing and commit, you know, persist. Like water wears down rocks, so surely your thoughts can cause matter to move and circumstances to take shape and take form and then just like let it go. So let's take for example, fit popular topic a lover okay you want a lover you're single but every time you find another method to do all you're really doing is affirming to your own self that you have to do something to get something and then you just find more things to do and then you never really get there and it's just it's overwhelming and then people will say oh but it worked for this person in two weeks and that person in three months but I've been trying for like two years because you get stuck, you get stuck in the state of trying. You don't need any more. And take it from someone, I've spent my, like, my entire, literally my entire adult life, <laughs> my whole adult life, just learning and wanting to know. But it doesn't make you a creator. It just makes you a learner. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'd rather be learning than learned. But it's not going to give you those results, right? So unless you're doing it because you just enjoy it or it's just something that, you know, moves you and inspires you, that's okay. But to actually manifest, you have to put in the work. Even Abraham says, like, you've got to do the work. You've got to do, you've got to find ways to feel better. So don't script to put yourself in a good mood. When you're in a good mood, script, affirm, visualize, and so forth. But don't do those things to get the thing. It will never, ever come. For example, you know, money is a very good example. People say, I want to win the lottery so I never have to work again because I don't like working. And you'll say, okay, so what are you doing to win the lottery? And they'll say, I'm doing like 10 different things and I'm drinking like wheatgrass, I'm snorting wheatgrass powder at four in the morning and then I'm running at six and I'm taking an ice bath after I get out of a lava shower and you're like, wow, that's really intense. So you're saying, you want to win the lottery so you don't have to work right. So you're working really hard so you don't have to work later on. That makes no sense. It defies law. If you want money to be free and work less, you have to do less now. If you want a lover to feel loved, you cannot attract that from a place of lovelessness. You have to feel loved where you are. So another hint is that God doesn't give you what you want. God gives you what you are. So if you are love, if you are freedom, if you are inspired, if you're creative, 
You're going to attract those kinds of people, you're going to attract those kinds of scenarios and things. But you've got to just chill out and trust and know that it's coming to you. And usually it will just happen unconsciously. Just really, really, it's so funny. My friend got the, um, I think it's like the, is it Adobe? She got like the software. I'm not techie as you can tell. And she's like, I really want to make something for you for Guru Grit. Uh, so thank you so much. The logo you see now, she made. Um, and I want like an eye, but I don't know how to do an eye just yet. But she went on this whole thing, what, what an eye meant and the symbolism of it. I'm like, you know, I love that. I love that. But I said, no pressure. And in my mind, I heard, don't worry, an eye will come to me. Just don't worry about it. I said, don't worry about it. An eye will come to me. I don't know how, but an eye will come to me. And less than a week later, I went to go visit a friend with my sister. And as we were leaving, she told my sister, oh, come, I have something for you. And then she went, oh, no, no, pull the car around. I've got something for you, too. It's like, okay. I completely forgot my friend was in a jewelry making class on Fridays. So pull up behind her building. She comes downstairs and out of her purse, she goes, this one's for you, one for you. And she had golden pendants that she'd made and like hand pressed. She said, they're really hard to do. So I really like this triangular one, you know, super occult. It's got an eye in it. It's an eye. It's a golden eye. And the pupil was slightly misshapen. So it looks like the letter G, like for Guru Grit. And I thought, that is literally so perfect. And I didn't ask for it. I didn't try to manifest it. I just thought the thought and I will come to me and I knew it and I was so confident and I let it go. I didn't know how, I didn't care from where, but it appeared so much better than I ever could have possibly imagined. And that's what you have to understand when it comes to wanting something. The experience is going to determine the outcome of the manifestation. I was relaxed, I was happy, it came to me quickly in a magical way, in a way I never could have foreseen, and in a way that to me is so perfect. Like money can't buy that. Money cannot buy that. You could dictate it to someone, but it's not that exciting when you throw some money at them and say, make me this, write me this song, da 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 da. It's so much more beautiful when it's gifted to you because existence is thought of it much better than you could have ever dreamed of it. So little things like that, just letting go, just brings in magical, beautiful experience, one after the next, after the next, after the next. Just allow yourself to be pleasantly surprised. So stop trying to figure it out and just start doing. And this is what Neville primarily taught. You know, Abraham taught this as well, but they changed it when people panicked. They called it the science of deliberate creation. And then they said people would panic and try to suck their thoughts back into their head. But now we just teach people how to feel good. Joy is the key. They have a song called Joy is the Key. But Neville just said, you know, if you just think about it, just plant that seed once and drop it. It must happen. How it happens is not your concern. But what you do is you say, okay, I'm gonna visualize, I'm gonna script, I'm gonna meditate. And then the next day you say, but that wasn't enough. I'm gonna do it again. I don't trust you, God. I don't trust you, life. I don't trust the universe, da 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 da. And then you just keep digging it up, digging it up. It, well, it can't grow. It, as soon as some roots grow, you tear them from the earth and it's very painful. Just leave it. Just trust the process. The universe has a function. There's nothing magical about this. We have will. We are created as companions of our creator, but the universe is a mechanism. It's like a product, it's like a thing. It's not magical, it's not divine. It just works because it does. It's like math, it's a law, and it must operate to serve you. It must serve me. So all it does is it reflects to us what we are feeding it. We're feeding this machine, and that's what you get. So just think about that. If you try to feed it something different every single day, a new insecurity, why you don't have that person, why you don't have that bank account, why you don't have that car, why you haven't lost that weight, why you haven't gained that weight, it confuses the whole thing. It will just disrupt, it's gonna explode. So just relax, you know enough, you've done enough, pick something and trust that it's done. Just say it's done, why am I even thinking about this? Why am I treating it like homework? If you treat it like homework, like it must be done every day, and if you miss a day, it's a problem, and then you start to get anxious, if that person shows up in your life, it's gonna be an anxiety-inducing experience. So just hmm, enjoy the journey, you're gonna enjoy the destination. You do not enjoy the manifestation process, you're not going to enjoy the manifestation, right? So if you were to procure a winning lottery ticket and actually win, you're gonna get way more cousins than uh, you thought you had coming out of the woodworks and bugging you, you know? So if you enjoy it and you're confident and you're stable, 
people are actually happy for you. Something to consider. I hope you enjoyed this and that's all I really wanted to say. I just wanted to make a quick video, take in this beautiful weather, um, and come back and listen to some things that you heard when you started. So like yesterday and two days ago, and then again this morning, I got really into the strokes and I remember listening to them when I was younger and I really enjoyed them. But I just see everything so differently now. It sounds so weird, but you're like, you appreciate it in a different way. And it's like Abraham says, and it's true for everyone, the message is always there. What you get from the message is different based on where you are in your life. You just don't hear the same things. You hear things differently. Same thing, everyone's written a test by now, and sometimes you just go through an old book or you remember something from high school and you think, I don't even know how I remember that. It was like 15 years ago. Or you go, how come I never learned that? And everyone's like, we did learn it. And you go, where, where was I? Where was my head, you know? So it's like that. You don't need another coach. You don't need another session. You don't need this. Just go back to the first book you bought, flip through some pages randomly, and see what kind of makes you feel alive again. Beep, beep, <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it'll just make sense to you, and it will just click, I promise you. Try it, you have nothing to lose, but just try it. This doesn't fail, this works for everyone. And if you say, doesn't work for me, then that's what you believe, and then that's what you get more of. That's how accurate it is, that if you don't believe, you just get evidence of lack of belief. I mean, it's absolutely faultless, and it's foolproof, and it operates for every single human being. So, go forth, pick one method. I encourage, you know, Neville Goddard's state akin to sleep, where you visualize and you fall asleep in that state until it feels real to you, and it must come. It doesn't matter if you're sad, it doesn't matter if you're heartbroken, if you're devastated, if you're angry, if you're hangry, it has to happen because you did it in a confident place with a sense of expectation, and that is the mechanism of your imagination, which is our creator in us. So, why would the creator play themselves? It absolutely wouldn't, it's far too, it's infinitely intelligent, so it wouldn't. <sighs> Just wanted to say that. Thank you so much for listening, I love you all, and um, I know it's taken me like, I don't even, I don't, I'm kind of embarrassed, maybe it's like six months, I'm not sure, but my Patreon is finally launched, so it's finally up, so there's that, and thank you all so much for your messages and your emails, and I look forward to making more videos for you and for interacting with you. So take care, and I wish you a beautiful rest of the week. Bye-bye.